anything we go against, God. Lord, no other name that a man shall be saved in that name of Jesus. Lord, we glorify you, we honor you, we exalt you on high tonight. And Father God, we just give you all of our praise. We pour out our spirit, Father, unto you tonight, God. Lord, we're here to worship you, God. Lord, we were created in your image and in your likeness, God, to give you glory, God. Lord, to give fellowship unto you, God. And Lord, we offer up a sacrifice of praise unto you tonight. Father, we give a wave offering, Father God, unto the Lord tonight. And Father God, I pray, Father, you receive this offering unto me tonight. Lord, let us bless your name, Father God. Let us give you thanks, Father, for all that you have done. You're worthy, Father God, tonight to be lifted up. You're worthy, Father God, tonight to be exalted. And Father God, you promise if we lift you up, Father, Lord, that you draw all men unto you. And God, we exalt thee on high tonight. God, have your will and your way in this place. In Jesus' name. for himself that he might die and said it is enough now O Lord take away my life for I am not better than my father's we've been talking about prevailing prayer here's a prayer that I pray most of y'all will never pray but there's good news at the end of this thing Elijah said it is enough now O Lord Take away my life, for I'm not better than my father's. Heavenly Father, I love you tonight. God, I thank you, Lord, for everyone that's under the sound of my voice tonight. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing and the unction of the Holy Ghost, God, that is in this house. And Father, I pray tonight, God, that you move in a mighty way in the midst of the service here at the Murphy Church of God. I pray, Father God, tonight, Father God, that souls are touched by the power of the gospel. And Father God, that you will come and you'll set free, God, and you do the work, Father God, that you have for this hour. We're going to lift up your name. We're going to praise you. We're going 
want to exalt you on high tonight. And Father God, we want your will and way through the remainder of this service. In Jesus Christ's heavenly, most precious name we pray. And everyone said, Amen. And can be seated here tonight. As we look into the Word of God and we look into 1 Kings. Now just the other night we talked about Elijah praying a 62 word prayer. Elijah prayed 62, 63 words and the fire of God fell from heaven. It consumed the sacrifice. It burned up the wood. It burned up the rocks. It licked up all of the water that was around. I'm telling you it was a fire so hot and the dirt, the dust even burned upon that day. After Elijah called fire down from heaven with a simple prayer, the word of God said that he went to the prophets of Baal and he slew of them 400. Then he went to the prophets of the grove and he slew of those prophets, I believe 450. And then just about 12 verses later, after praying that prayer, here is a man running for his life. I'm talking about a man that had power with God, power to shut up the heavens. At the Elijah's prayers, it did not rain for three and a half years upon the earth. But yet, after he destroyed the prophets of Baal, after he destroyed the groves, he prayed and God showed him a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising up out of the sea. And he told Ahab, he better get on the move, didn't he? Because here was the abundance of rain. It began to rain. The clouds got dark. And I'll tell you, Elijah outrun Ahab, outrun the chariots under the Spirit and the anointing of God Almighty. But just a few verses later, here is a man that's depressed. Here is a man that is troubled. <coughs> here is a man that thinks he's the only one serving God. There's times in our life that we can get to the place that we feel we're the only one serving God. There's times in our life we can get to the place that we think nobody cares for us, nobody loves us, everybody's against us. That's where Elijah was. He went and he found himself in the wilderness. He told his servant, he said, you stay where you're at. You stay right here at Beersheba. I'm going another day's journey into the wilderness. He got in the wilderness and he found himself a juniper tree. And he sat down under the juniper tree. And then he prayed. Oh Lord, it's enough. It's enough. Take my life. Let it all end. Let it be over right now. In other words, what he was saying is, God, I've run my course, I feel. Lord, I feel I've done all I can do for you. Now, God, just let me die. Listen, you'll die when God wants you to die. But you can't take your life. And if you take your life, you're going to lift your eyes in hell. But if you die the natural death and you're a child of God, been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, having your sins covered, you're going to lift up your eyes in heaven. You will be in the presence of God. Let me die, Lord. But what happened? The Word of God said that he fell asleep. And what happened? The angel of the Lord come down and touched him. Elijah, rise and eat. And he woke up and there was water and a cake of bread. He drank that water and he ate that cake of bread. He fell asleep again. But Elijah, rise and eat. The journey is too great for him. But rise and eat. He woke up the second time and he drank of that cup and he ate of that bread. Then he went 40 days on that food. Our sister told me that you ladies, some of you fasted on Tuesdays. Before she told me that, I just asked somebody else in the church, would you join me in a fast this week? So I'm joining that person in the fast, and I'm joining you ladies in the fast this week on Tuesday also. You join it too. Do you know what fasting is? Fast is you deny yourself food. You deny yourself the things that your body wants. And you seek God. You get in that word, brother. And you read that. I'll tell you where to read. You start in John chapter number 1. And you read that on Tuesday. All right, Michael? God will help you there. If you'll read the Word of God, you'll fast, you'll pray. Things will happen in your life. 
He went 40 days on that journey. He found himself at Mount Horeb. When he got to Mount Horeb, there he went into the cleft of the rock. That same cleft of the rock that I believe Moses found himself in. And there we know God came. God wasn't in the wind. God wasn't in the fire. God wasn't in all these things. But God was in a still, small voice. Let me preach. He was in a still, small voice. And when God came and spoke to him in that still, small voice, he wrapped his mouth, he wrapped his coat around his face, and he walked to the mouth of the cave. And God spoke to him. And God told him he had thousands, five thousand, had not bowed a knee unto Baal. And he was not alone. He also told him, I'm not done with you. My God, there's some people think God's done with them. They think they've run their race. They think they've done all that they need to do. No, if God's not done with you, God's got more work for you to do. He said, I want you to go and I want you to anoint Hazel. I want you to anoint Jehu. I want you to anoint Elisha, prophet in your stead. You're not done, Elijah. My God, I believe God come by Murphy Church of God tonight to tell somebody, I'm not done with you. You might be tired. You might be weary. You might be having a long time of this journey. You might be tired and wore out in your prayer life, but God's saying, I'm not done with you. You. I'm telling you tonight, when you're being prevailing in prayer, Brother Bill, and you feel like you can't pray again, my God sent an angel by to lift you up, to strengthen you, to give you angelic food to feed you and nourish you and help you along this journey. You can trust in God. God will make a way. Pastor, is that true throughout the Word of God? I'm telling you what He done in 1 Kings chapter number 19. He done also in Daniel chapter number 10. I read about a man named Daniel. He was fasting and praying for 21 days. He had prayed and sought the face of God. And when he prayed and sought the face of God, the answer did not come. But he continued prevailing in prayer. Saints of God, if we don't get the answer we need, we need to continue to prevail in prayer. Don't quit praying. Don't quit praying for your children. Don't quit praying for your grandchildren. Don't quit praying for your husband or your wife, your spouse. You keep prevailing in prayer. But a lot of Daniel prayed 21 days, no answer, been fasting. He was by the river Hedekel, and when he come there, guess what? There stood an angel of God. And that angel of God, when Daniel looked upon him, the word of God said all of the strength that was within him was taken from him. He lost all of his natural strength and he fell on his face before God. When we fall on our face before God, God will do something for us. God will help us. And when he fell on his face before God, the angel of the Lord come up to him and he touched him. And he lifted him up. And he set him upon his knees. And he set him upon the palms of his hands. And the Lord gave him strength. But the Lord continued to talk to him. And he told him, you need to stand upon your feet. And the Lord reached down, that angel did, and he stood him upon his feet. Amen. Go ahead and sit down, son. We'll get your time in just a minute, all right? He stood upon his feet. And the angel told him that I've come by to strengthen you. I'm telling you, when you've been prevailing in prayer, when you've been fasting, Sister Kathy, when you've been seeking God, Sister Bonnie, when you've got to the place you just don't feel like you can pray no more, my God will send a holy angel unto you and He'll lift you up off of the ground. He'll put you on your knees. He'll take you from your knees. He'll put you on the feet. His power will come upon you and you'll find the strength to press on. But sometimes in the church, we can't make it on our own. Our flesh is weak. Our flesh is weary. But He said in our weakness, His strength is made perfect and God will send the angel of God by to touch you and lift you up. But the problem is we're living in a church age today where no one is prevailing in prayer. We're living in a church age today when we don't need to fast. We don't need to seek God. We've got everything we need. Honey, I'll tell you right now, we better be on our face praying to God. We better be seeking the face of the Lord. We need the power of the Holy Ghost in our life. If we're going to face the things we're going to face in 2018, we need God. And if we'll seek the face of God, God will give us strength. God will lift us up. God will set us on our feet. He will establish our goings. 
Uh, Pastor, you've told me things in the Old Testament. You've told me things there in the book of Daniel about the prophets. But now, Lord, we're living in another day, Pastor. you got to help me a little bit. I want to ask you a question tonight. How many was in the Garden of Gethsemane? Where was Jesus at prior to going to the Garden of Gethsemane? In the upper room. Who was with him, Seth, in the upper room? The disciples. How many of them was there? What happened to one of them? The Word of God said Satan entered into it. He went forth to sell the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. So Jesus took how many disciples with him to the garden? Eleven. He got near unto the garden and he stopped and he said, Y'all stay here. And he took some and he went on a little further. Who did he take? I'll give you a hint. The sons of thunder. Peter, James, and John. And Jesus. He went a little further and he told Peter, James, and John, he said, You tarry here and you pray. And he went on as stones cast further. Now you can read that in Matthew, Mark, and John, I believe. That same story. Matthew tells something else about Peter. Did not the Lord at the Last Supper tell Peter that he would deny him? Peter said, I won't. He said, before the cock crows, you'll deny me thrice, three times. I'll tell you something else. The Lord told Peter, he said, the devil hath desired to sift you like wheat. But he said, I have prayed for you. Brother Seth, I like it when you pray for me. Brother Mark, I like it when you pray for me. Brothers and sisters, I like it when you're praying for your pastor. But let me tell you something. If I knew Jesus Christ was praying for me, that's the best prayer I could get. No offense unto you. I want your prayer, Sister Brenda. But to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is praying for me, what better prayer than can we get? Peter, I know hardships is coming your way. Peter, I know you're going to deny me. Peter, I know the devil's after you. But son, I have prayed for you. And when you repent, when you make things right, when Jesus said, will you strengthen my brethren? My God, Jesus knew he was going to fall. Jesus knew he was going to deny him. But Jesus also knew he's going to weep and he's going to cry unto me. I'm going to convert him and I'm going to put the power of the Holy Ghost in him, Sister Bonnie. And he's going to go forth and preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he's going to strengthen the brethren. May I tell you tonight, the devil will love to see if every one of you is sweet. But I can tell you in John chapter number 17, in a high prayer. The Lord not only prayed for himself. He not only prayed for the disciples, but he prayed for all
I read in Luke chapter number 22 where Jesus had put them disciples down to pray. Mama. He told them to pray and he went to stones, cast a little father to pray and he got down and he prayed. He said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And the word of God said he was getting weak and he was getting weary. But my God, Luke said there was an angel of God in the garden of Gethsemane. And he reached out and he touched Jesus Christ and he gave him strength and he gave him help. And he gave him the energy to get up for it and continue that prayer. And it was not until the angel of God touched him that he prayed until his sweat became as great drops of blood. Did you hear me? If you pray to the place that your sweat is becoming as great drops of blood, medically speaking, you're at the brink of death. What do you say, Pastor? Michael, I'm telling you why Jesus was in that garden. He was praying for you. He was praying for you to be at the Murphy Church of God on November 11, 2018. And son, I believe God's got something to do for you tonight. I believe God's going to help you here in a little bit. You just hold on a little bit longer. He prayed until his sweat became as a great drop of blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Sister PJ, if his veins were popping in his body, that his blood was coming out of his pores, it was just a matter of minutes till he had been dead in that garden. Oh no. Oh no. I feel him tonight. He can't die in that garden. Oh no. To be the sacrifice, he had to be on the mercy seat. To be the sacrifice, he had to be hung between God and the earth. He said, the prophet did in Moses, he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of God be lifted up. He had to be lifted up from the earth. The Father knew it. He sent his holy angel down. He said, my son's carrying a heavy burden. My son is bearing the sin of all humanity. My son is about to die for the load that he's carrying. But when you go down, my God, when you go down and touch him one more time, because he can't die in that garden. He's got to go before Herod. He's got to go before Pontius Pilate. He's got to go to Mount Calvary. He was prevailing in prayer. But when he couldn't do no more. Oh, Pastor, you're talking about the Lord. Yes, I am, but I'm also talking about a man born of a Virgin Mary. When he couldn't prevail no more, the angel of God touched him. And Jesus then prayed till his sweat became great drops of blood. <laughs> and then he got up. And he come back to them disciples that were sleeping. And he said, sleep on. Could you not watch and pray for an hour that you enter not into temptation? My God, is the church asleep tonight? What did he do, Seth, when he went to heaven? What did the son do? Where did he go? He went and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And what's he doing, Sister Ruth, at the right hand of the Father for me? He's interceding for me. What is intercessory? He's praying. My God, Jesus Christ tonight is sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's praying for the Murphy Church of God tonight. He's interceding on our behalf in prayer. Is the church laying down asleep in the garden? Or have we woke ourselves up and said, I'm going to pray. I'm going to get a hold of God. I'm going to prevail in prayer. And if I don't, and if I fail, if I get too weary, my God will send a holy angel. Touch me. Will he do it? Yes, he will. Brother, 
There's some men in jail because they preached the gospel. Listen to me. Because they preached the gospel. But the Lord sent an angel in and he let them go. Peter and them walked out of the jail because the angel came. I'm talking about prevailing in prayer. I'm telling you tonight, God loves you. I'm telling you tonight, angels encamp around about them that believe. And I'm telling you tonight, if you will prevail in prayer, if you get to the place that you can't pray no more, you get to the place that you can't get up and go another step, you get to the place you have no strength within you, my God will send an angel to touch you. My God will send somebody by to minister unto you tonight. It's time the church prevailed in prayer again. And if we'll prevail in prayer, if we get discouraged, you'll send an angel to touch us. If we get to the place we've prayed and we've prayed and we've prayed and we get no answer, he'll send us an angel to tell us why. My children, know ye this night that I am in thy midst. Know ye this night that your prayer has come up before me. Know ye this night that I have heard your prayer. Know ye tonight that I have a legion of angels round about you. Know ye this night that you are my children and I shall take care of you. I shall look after you. You call upon me. You do everything that you can. And then I will come by and I will touch you, saith God. Lift up your hands all over this house right now unto him. He'll come by and touch you. He'll come by and minister to you. He'll come by and give you the strength that you need. Wherever you're at, no matter what you're going through, God will send somebody by to touch you. God will send somebody by to help you. God will send an angel by to minister to you. No, ye not tonight that sometimes you entertain angels unaware. Sometimes that one you're talking to in the grocery store, they had a kind word for you. They put a smile upon your face. They brought you a word of encouragement that you didn't know who they were or where they come from. It might have been a holy angel from God sent by to touch you. Maybe you're in the hospital bed and a nurse comes in that you hadn't seen before and she gives you a scripture or lays her hands on you and prays for you. And the next thing you know, another nurse comes in you've never seen before and you ask her, what are you talking about, Pastor? I've talked to people that it's happened to. Brother said, it's an angel of God sent by to touch somebody that was trying to prevail in prayer. My God, he'll come by and minister to you if you will believe in him and trust in him. Jesus will touch you. And if we will pray, and we'll prevail in prayer, God will touch us. Well, Pastor, I've prayed and I've prayed and I've prayed. And there ain't been no change. We're living in a society. Some of our mothers has prayed for their children until they can't pray no more. And they've cried out. You got one of them mamas been praying, ain't you? Yes, I do. They've been praying. And they feel like God ain't going to hear their prayers or God ain't going to answer them. I got good news. We serve a God that answers prayer. We serve a God that when you feel like giving up and you feel like throwing in the towel and you feel like there's no use, God will send an angel by. Elijah, I'm not done with you, son. I got a work for you to do. You're not going to sit here and die. You're going to rise up. And you're going to go forth under the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost of God. Saints of God, we got to rise up. And we got to go forward in the power and the unction of the Holy Ghost. Stand with me all over this house right now. Michael, you want help tonight? If you want it, 
I believe he's here to help you tonight. I love you, son. I want to see God change your life. His mama's been weeping over you. She wet this carpet with her tears for you this morning. Not only her. Look at me. Not only her. You have a brother here. Wet this carpet with his tears. Not only that. You have some nieces and nephews weeping. You had a grandmama praying for you. Amen. And you had a church full of people right here praying for you. If you won't set free, if you won't help, I serve a God that's going to help you. Oh, yeah, I do too. Amen. Let's come and pray. Church, I want you to come around. Let's gather around my. Come on, Mama. Come right up here. Let's get down right here. Father, 